uh, it's Steve's turn. Okay. So Steve, what do you view the role of federal government in public education? Well, I'll tell you, it's, uh, it's limited. And what do I mean by that? Well, we need to allow teachers to teach. And what does that mean? We saw with the No Child Left Behind Act, the discretion and the ability of local teachers being taken away. And it just plain and simply didn't work. Now, that has been uh, uh, backed off a little bit with the, the recent legislation, Every Child Succeeds Act, and, and I applaud that. We need to put power in the hands of the teachers to face the challenges that they face every day. I think everybody in this room, at least I would like to think that everybody in this room agrees that not every classroom is the same, not every neighborhood is the same, they have different challenges and we need to trust our teachers to find ways to meet those challenges. We need to get away from these high stakes testing and the dictates of the federal government on the teachers. However, I do think that the federal government has a, a role in helping to fund uh, schools and to help to equal the playing field because we know that the schools are not equal. We know that. There's no way you're going to tell me that Jamesville DeWitt is on the same playing field, on the level playing field with some of the city schools. I know that my daughter's a teacher in the Syracuse City School District, so I know that they're very different situations. So um, that's something that needs to be addressed. Okay, then after Eric. Okay, I'll start by saying what it shouldn't be. It should not be pushing a common core, a universal, homogenous approach to education down the throats of children, teachers, families, and the country. It should not be raising charter schools and funding them as an alternative to public schools. Again, we live in a funny time. If we had to vote for the existence of public schools today, I'm not sure all the states would go for that. We need to protect our public schools. We need to invest more. The federal government for many years has done investment, particularly in low-income schools. That's incredibly important. School lunch, after-school programs, uh, school breakfast programs, summer programs, those are huge. That's an investment we ought to be making. As part of the schools, the government ought to be investing in jobs for kids during the summer and when they graduate. They, they also ought to be looking at universal, moving towards a universal right to go to college or into advanced vocational education and have that paid for as a universal system. And I say that because when you put restrictions on it by income alone, you end up having, you create classes and fights between groups. Education is a human right. We ought to really encourage it, not only for kids, I'll take it a step further because I work in aging. It's important throughout our lives, and the federal government should be creating opportunities for people to go into second careers, third careers, and learn in the process through ongoing education that's provided. One more thing. Pre-K. Does he have to? Pre-K pre education. That should be universal. Um, I think having high standards is a good thing, and I think that's a, a great goal that we have, but obviously the implementation of the Common Core Standards was completely botched and doesn't, has not had the benefits that anybody, I would, I think, hoped to have. I don't know what their actual intent was, but I hope that they were having to, you know, raise the standards for our kids. I don't support having a one-size-fits-all approach to education. My son is in seventh grade at a Syracuse City School. I'm on the PTO, and I see firsthand the value of our public system. And I want to support whatever aspect of public education that I can and support our teachers. We need to make sure that we're providing our resources resources so that our teachers can be successful and can provide our students with the skills necessary to be competitive in a growing global economy. Um, you know, I think we need to make sure that we're working with our teachers and having them 
at the table as part of the discussion. They should be in charge of the curriculum in their classrooms, not coming from on high from the federal government. So I think those are, you know, that's, that's what I see. I, I see the federal government's role as providing the resources, being able to um, provide funding to help reduce class sizes or pay for teacher's aides or identify the needs where the needs areas are so that all kids, no matter what their zip code, can uh, be afforded a good quality, safe education. And I'll add too, I think that the federal government needs to play a stronger role in universal pre-K. We've got to get to these kids early so that they have a chance to succeed, that they have the skills necessary when they go into kindergarten and for the rest of their academic careers. So I would, I would strongly, strongly support uh, any efforts to uh, fund pre-K um, once I'm in Congress. Okay, uh, rebuttals, Steve? Well, there's, there's nothing to rebut. I mean, I'll add that in addition, we should fight against this idea of issuing vouchers that people can use to go to private schools because that will kill the public schools. I mean, you know what's going to happen. There are those kids in the public schools who their parents make, you know, okay money, but not enough to send them to the private school. But if they get that voucher, they will be able to. And then the only kids left in the public schools will be the poorest of the poor. And that's a recipe for disaster. We can't allow it. We need to fight against charter schools and vouchers. Public schools are good. They work. They will continue to work. We need to defend them. Uh, Eric? Say so another piece on the role of the federal government is research and development and education. Funding research is important. Funding model programs is important. But telling the citizens of the United States that they all have to be part of a parallel curriculum is not. The federal government might also regulate textbook providers. I have, as a professor, I've started buying older editions of books that I know that in fact have the same information. When you're looking at the history of the United States and social policy, it doesn't change much in, much in two years that you can't do with an article. But the costs are like $200 for my students. They can get it on Amazon, and I know Amazon's not the most labor-friendly situation, but you can get it at Amazon an earlier edition for as low as 50 cents. So our textbook industry has to be regulated and the federal government can do it. And also the political use of our textbooks by the right wing has to be looked at carefully. Thank you, Colleen. Um, I think I'm all set. Thank you, though. Okay, thank you. Now, I want you